Welcome to the final installment of the three-part Excel tutorial. In this final segment, we're going to combine the data from the POF and PROSPER 202 reports that we've worked on in the previous parts. First, we're going to make a new sheet to put the data. Now we need to list the ads that we want to see and choose a particular campaign that we want to see the ads of. Then we need to use the POF report to filter out the keywords that belong to that campaign so we show the stats for just those keywords. So let's pick a campaign first. Let's do that with the POF report. I'm going to pick campaign 1, so I'm going to copy that value over. Then let's create some placeholders for the keywords, as well as create the relevant columns that we want to show. I'm going to design this sheet to show a maximum of 100 keywords at any given time. To create the placeholders, I'm just going to count from 1 to 100. So I'm going to add 1 and fill this formula down until I get to 100. Perfect. Then we're going to create the headings that we want. So keyword, copy, impressions, cost, clicks, CTR, CPM, conversions, revenue, profit, and ROI. And you can add other columns yourself if you'd like. Okay, now we're ready to fill the table. Let's go back to the POF report. We're going to use a conditional formula to filter out the keywords that we want. We're going to start with the if statement. And since we're going to use more than one conditional, we're going to use the AND function. For the first conditional, the campaign of the current row has to equal to the campaign that we've selected. So I'm going to link it to that cell. So the campaign of each row has to equal to the campaign that we selected here. I'm going to lock that cell so it doesn't change. Let's go back to the POF sheet. For the second conditional, I'm going to introduce the COUNTIF function. The COUNTIF function takes a range that you select and puts the number of times a specified value appears in that selected range. We use this to identify the unique keywords. So if a keyword appears in the range above a keyword already, then we don't want to count that keyword again. So our count if has to equal to zero. So I want to select the range above the current keyword. The column is I, so I'm going to say I1 to I1. For the range selection, we need to lock the first cell of the range so it doesn't shift. So as I drag the formula down, the top row stays where it is, and I'm going to ask it to count the current keyword, which is I2. And our count if has to equal to zero. So in the range above our current keyword, the keyword can't have appeared already. So if both of these conditions are met, then what? I'm going to use the max function here. If both of these conditions are met, then I'm going to add one to the max number above the current cell. You'll see why we need to do this in a minute. Just bear with me here. We'll need to again lock the first cell of the range so the top of the range does not move as we fill down. And we're going to add 1. If the conditionals are not met, then we'll have a return blank. All right, let's see what happens. Let's fill the formula down. It appears I made a mistake here. Yep, in the max formula, I can't be locking both of the cells. I should only be locking the top cell. So let's try again. Perfect. Okay, so now we've basically identified the keywords we need to include. And there are a total of 12. Let's list the keywords in the sheet that we created. We're going to use the index and match functions that we learned in part two. Close index, and we want to return the keywords here. So our index is going to be the range of the keywords. Lock that in. 
For the row number, we're going to use the match function. And we're going to find it using the rankings here. For the lookup array, we're going to use the column that we just made. Lock that as well. Match type 0. Let's fill that down. Okay, it appears that there we've gotten an error here. Let's use the if error function that we learned in part two as well to handle the error. If this formula has an error, then return blank. Let's fill that out. Perfect. So now you can see why we had to use the max formula. This way we can list the keywords one through 12. Now let's quickly find the copies for these keywords as well using index match. I'm just gonna do it quickly here. To calculate the impressions, we're going to use the sum ifs formula. First, select the range that you want to sum. And we want the impressions range. Then enter the criteria that it, you want to use to sum it by. We want to select the keyword range. And the criteria for that range is, of course, our keyword. That'll sum up all the impressions that have the keyword in this row. Let's copy that to the cost column. And the only difference here is we're going to sum up a different column. We can use the same logic here for clicks, except the click data is going to come from the Prosper report. The summing criteria range is still the keyword, but from the Prosper report. The criteria for that range is, of course, again, our keyword. Now we can find our CTR. Remember to use the if error function to catch the errors. The formula here is clicks divided by impressions. If it's an error, we're going to return a blank. CPM, similar logic. The formula here is cost divided by impressions divided by 1,000. For conversions, we're just going to copy over the clicks formula. And all we're changing is the sum range. We're going to select the leads column. For revenue, same thing, except we're going to select the income column. Profit, handle the error with if error. Revenue minus costs. The ROI, same thing, handle it with the if error. The formula here is profit divided by costs. Let's fill these formulas down. And there you have it. We've now built a primitive version of iPixel's campaign viewer. You can use the same logic to identify the unique image codes and create a new sheet to show the performance of particular images in the same manner that we've done the keywords. And the same goes for age, gender, and any other variables that you're able to pass through using your click-through URL. I encourage you to give that a try now using the follow along file. We've already parsed out the image codes and the like in the previous two parts, so you should be prepared to start that. Now, the goal of this tutorial isn't to create this specific spreadsheet. It's to demonstrate how using a few key functions, you can do a lot with Excel. I hope you can take the fundamentals that you learned here and apply them to whatever data analysis you need done. With Excel, there's almost always a solution. If you guys have any questions at all with Excel, please do not hesitate to post them in the comments section. No question is too stupid. I will answer them. This is Tom, signing off.